Okay, this video is how to spot sophistry in nutrition. There's a lot of uh, nonsense out there, and so I'll just clarify a couple things. First of all, caffeine. Look, there's so many problems with caffeine that I personally think coffee and tea are a bad idea. Um, there's special issues with tea, concentrating things you don't want, caffeine in general. You know, basically it's the same hormones as sleep, elevated catecholamines, adrenaline, noradrenaline, as well as cortisol. That means it has an excitotoxin effect. It's also a vasoconstrictor to decrease blood flow to the cerebral cortex and the uh, hippocampus. It also decreases ability to sleep, decreases depth of sleep, increases blood lipids, increases blood pressure, increases heart rate, increases risk of arrhythmia, increases calcium excretion in the urine and kidney stones. Um, you, you piss out some of your calcium and your magnesium. You can become hypomagnesic. Um, I think it's a bad idea. Okay, and I know you get addicted to it. It used to interfere with me when I had to be getting called to do procedures that after running get coffee. I quit it and I'm glad that I did. I made a whole video on that, but uh, that comes up a lot. There's even a sleep expert guy, and he seems like a nice guy, Matthew Walker, but you sense that he feels pressure, that he has to say something good about coffee, at least decaf. And I'm like, come on, dude, you're a sleep expert. Don't be a wimp. All right. People saying chocolate is good. Yeah, right. I mean, that's stupid. How is some high-fat, high-sweet processed food going to be good for you? Okay, uh, sodium. I mean, there's lots of problems with sodium. And there's BS about, you know, it's just because it's, it's a profitable thing for processed food companies to say sodium's okay. But I've talked about that tons in other lectures. But I'm just letting you know, when, when I hear somebody say sodium's good, then I immediately, you know, have a big drop in my respect and trust of that person's nutrition expertise. A tiny bit of sodium on your food, McDougall will say that, you know, he knows what he's talking about, that's not a big deal. But having higher amounts in your, in your processed food or your meat, bad, bad idea. Okay, MSG and MFG. There's tons and tons of information about MSG and MFG being excitotoxins, uh, potentially increasing the risk of obesity, harmful effects on the hypothalamus, potential increasing the risk of autism. You can check out that Catherine Reed lady and all her work on it. You can check out Blaylock's work on it. You can check out Samuel's work on it. There's a ton of reasons why you don't want to be eating that stuff. <clears throat> soy, tons of bad publicity on soy before it became profitable. Okay, I've, I've given in like three separate entire videos on that. Um, avocados and apples. There's some people still recommending avocados. It's like, don't they read anything? You know that that new thing is being put on it, that AP, uh, I'm not even going to say it all the way, ends in L, and now it's on apples and it's potentially on other things and it's not exactly clear. Whenever they're hiding something, like they hide MSG, whenever they're hiding something like the stuff they're putting on here, you know there's a problem with it. If it was good, they would brag about it. When it's bad, they hide it from you. Okay, cardiac calcium tea and, you know, uh, carotid, intima media thickening, ultrasound. Look, you already know if you ate the uh, Western diet for a long time, you've got atherosclerosis. You don't need these expensive tests. You don't need this radiation exposure to know. Um, cyanocobalamin. You don't need anything with the word cyano in it. Um, you know, I prefer, I, I do take methylcobalamin. Uh, prebiotic fiber supplements. Just eat the plant food. There you'll get your fiber. What do you need all these supplements for? Um, elderly need more protein or, or they get sarcopenia. And I always laugh at that. I'm 60 years old, okay? I had a bunch of young guys teasing me about, you know, not I can't do bench press because I have old shoulder injuries. So I just said, let's have a push-up contest. I did 78 push-ups, okay? As an old man who eats a very low-protein diet, give me a break. The Tadahumara, incredible energy. The Okinawans, incredible energy for meat and plant food diets. All this stuff, uh, you know, you need more protein. That's all BS to sell stuff. Okay, brush your teeth with F minus. You know, we don't want to do in that. We talked about the whole Nathan Bryan, Caldwell Esseston, and uh, nitric oxide lectures, how that kills the bacteria in the back of the tongue so you can't convert the nitrates from your greens into nitrites, you know, from NO3 to NO2, and therefore you, you, you can't run the, the cycle as much. So later in the stomach acid, make it go to NO um, and get your systemic nitric oxide vasodilator, which you need more of as you get older because your endothelial cells don't make it as much. So what I'm saying is brush your teeth at F mine is probably not a good idea. I only brush my teeth about once every two weeks, and I do it with um, these non-F minus, minimal toxicity toothpastes. Uh, Tom's a main, of course, has less of this F minus, but flossinum is more important because at night your saliva production goes down, um, and just don't avoid... Avoid acidic things and hypersweet things, and you probably won't ever, ever have a problem with them. I haven't been to a dentist in 
over 25 years. I have no problems with my teeth. Um, eight cups a day of water. Um, you know, does an 80 pound woman need to drink the same amount of water as a football lineman? I've seen a lot of fat ladies walking around with gallon jars of water to lose weight. But you know, what's in that water? If it's full of estrogenic chemicals like typical tap water, um, it was full of uh, aluminum, you know, uh, which they put in tap water as a so-called clarifying agent. Um, that's not good for your health. The EDCs are going to potentially make you gain more weight. That's not the best idea. Um, none of that started until they started selling bottled water and Gatorade. Uh, a lot of people trying to say saturated fat is okay. There's so much problems with saturated fat known since the 1950s. There's no, no point in even discussing it. I've given tons of lectures on that. Olive oil, you know, it's got about 10 to 14% sat fat. Um, it's got, you know, maybe, let's say, ballpark 70% MUFA. I don't know exactly the MUFA percent. I haven't looked at that just recently, but in that ballpark. And it's got a lot of omega-6. There's tons of problems with olive oil. Olive oil, I think, is for chumps. Um, well, I already talked about chocolate. People say some of these sweeteners like stevia, okay, no, it's associated with infertility. Aspartame is an excitotoxin, et cetera, et cetera. Sucralose is bad. They're all bad. Uh, saying that this thing is no big deal. No, if you actually read the chem sheet ingredients, you will be shocked how bad they are. Shocked at it. Not just surprised, shocked at how bad they are. Uh, Omega-3 fats are getting lots of hype, and there's a, there's also this sort of s story going around that you need them or you become demented. You know, I don't see people become demented from fat deficiencies. Um, that's the least of what I would expect to see. Um, I worry about it causing insulin resistance, causing obesity at such high caloric density. Um, I worry about it being contaminated with HG. Algae, you know, I worry about algae being contaminated with um, excitotoxins, you know, uh, once they have these algae blooms once in a while. I worry about its association with increased risk of prostate cancer and anything associated with increased risk of prostate cancer, a hormone-dependent cancer. I wonder, is it associated with increased risk of other cancers like breast or endometrial? I don't know, but I would worry about it. Anything that causes immune suppression, is that going to weaken your ability to prevent infections or cancer? I mean... You don't need to go searching it around. The, the Blue Zone or you know, healthy National Geographic Butner patients didn't go searching around for this. You still remember things from your childhood. We still have our neurons from our childhood. The brain cells don't turn over that much. We got precursors like ALA from our plant foods. That seems like that's probably good enough. We evolve theoretically in a hot climate, you know, and apes and chimps, they, they don't eat fish. <laughs> um I'm not aware of any empiric evidence, uh, Jeff Nelson states that here, and I've read other papers and stuff about it that supported that, that there's no proven benefit to the brain health, et cetera. Most of these things, when you look at closely, they come from industry. You know, it's a profitable thing. Um, and then there's other people saying organic doesn't matter. And I think it depends on the food. For some foods, it doesn't matter so much. There's a so-called environmental working group, Dirty Dozen, where it matters more. But one has to be careful with non-organic food. For example, GP is sprayed on oats, wheats, and lentils when it's non-organic. So those take foods that are normally good foods, and I would consider GP a major problem. You know, it's glycine phosphate, and it can substitute for glycine in some proteins, is the theory, according to Senef and others. Um, it increases the risk of leaky gut. It originally was used as an antibiotic, so it can, you know, take out your good gut bacteria and lead you to get the toxic bacteria, and um, that's not good. Leaky gut has increased autoimmune disease, increased postprandial endotoxemia. That's all bad. It increases your risk of fatty liver. Fatty liver is like diabetes of the liver, so you don't want that. Um, it's a brain excitotoxin. The glycine, you know, helps bind the NMDA receptor, which has segments for glutamate as well as for glycine, and it has an excitotoxic effect, increasing metabolic rate in brain cells, which is not good. Um, it's possibly associated with diabetes, of course, if it's associated with fatty liver, but for other reasons as well. Catherine Reed claims it made, uh, well, actually, Seneth claims it's a major cause of autism. Uh, Catherine Reed said that MSG made her daughter autistic and she cured it. Um, Senef is that um, MIT scientist that you know, wrote the book Toxic Legacy. Um, and the Roundup stuff is worse than the GP alone because it's got other adjuvants and whatnot in it. So I would be concerned about all that. Um, they don't spray uh, GP or atrazine on non, on when, stuff, when it's organic. Atrazine is super powerful estrogenic, turns the... Male frog into female frog, so, you know, it's also probably obesogenic. Uh, BT corn's associated with leaky gut. That's what it does to insects is to, you know, pop their stomachs, if you will. So do you really want to be putting that into your gut? 
Um, I worry about people saying nuts are so great and seeds. You know, they're real high fat foods. Anything that's high fat, it's going to, you know, uh, I'd be concerned about that. I'm not going to get into all that. That takes a lot of time to get into all that. Jeff Nelson made some real good videos about the problems with nuts. Um, you know, nuts can be 80, 90 percent fat. That's the last thing I would want, including sat fat and whatnot. Uh, flax, I'll have to study it more, but it's hard for me to imagine how super, super estrogenic fat is, is going to be helpful to me. So anyways, these are some things that uh, you might hear about. I think that I would not be enthusiastic about things. And there's, there's other nutrition advice that's even worse than this, but we're not going to go into that.